السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت الحليم الحكيم أو oh الله we do not have knowledge besides that which you have granted us for indeed you are most knowledgeable most wise اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وَانْفَعْنَا بِمَا عَلَّمْتَنَا O oh Allah, grant us knowledge that is beneficial and benefit us from the knowledge that you have granted us. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa min aynin la tadma' wa min qalbin la yakhsha' wa min batunin la yashba' wa min du'a'in la yusma' O oh Allah, we seek your protection from knowledge that is of no use. We seek your protection from eyes that will not cry for your sake. We seek your protection from a heart that will not fear you. We seek your protection from a stomach that will never be filled, from a soul that will never be content. And we seek your protection from a dua that is made to you that is not answered. My dearest ulama of this blessed city of Cape Town, my dearest brothers and sisters and listeners, we all know that as Muslims, we are aiming for something. We are aiming for something very high. We are aiming for something that we have only been told about, but we have not seen. We are told that the best beauty of this dunya is but the dust of Jannah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of Jannah, the verses are so vivid, the descriptions are so deep, that even the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ Definitely in Jannah is that which no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and no mind or no heart has ever thought of or ever imagined. What this means, my dear brothers and sisters, is that if you have seen anything in this dunya, Wallahi it does not qualify to be in, the, in Jannah. If you have seen something, think of what you've seen, the most beautiful of motor vehicles, the most beautiful of women, or in the case of women, the most handsome of men, or the loveliest of apartments and hotels, the best of houses, the best of beaches and sceneries and mountains. And I tell you, in terms of the world, your beautiful city of Cape Town competes. If the world was to be described Cape Town would be described as the hoor of this world, subhanallah. As a city, wallahi, you have been granted a lot. Breathtaking sceneries all over. With people whom I yet have to meet the match of. I have not come across better people than the people of this city. And I am not saying it because I am standing in front of you. I put Allah as a witness between myself and my statement. It is something I have seen. The hearts of the people, may Allah keep them as good as they are. Everyone who's ever been here has always commented positively before the scenery about the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep this iman with us. May Allah keep us as the best of people. So remember, we are here in this dunya. We have a mission. That mission has a goal. That goal has a picture to it, which has been described by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was telling you, it is Jannah. Fiha ma la ra'at. No eye has ever seen whatever is in Jannah. And I've already told you, anything you've ever seen in Jannah is better than that. 
anything you've ever heard of, any voice you've ever heard, any melodious recitations you might have heard. Wallahi in Jannah is something more soothing to the ear than you've ever heard. Similarly, if your mind or heart has imagined something, then remember, whatever you have thought of, Jannah is too high to have these lowly thoughts of ours in it. It will have better. I give you an example. If you were to close your eyes or even with your eyes opened and imagine vehicles in the air, glass boxes that we flew in, I sat in it and I thought of going to Australia. Two minutes later, I flew through the wind and I landed in Australia. Does, does this go through your mind? It's possible for this to go through your mind. You can daydream about it. It can be a fairy tale. Wallahi, in Jannah is better than that. If your mind has thought about it, that means in Jannah is far beyond that. Read the fairy tales, the fiction stories. Wallahi, Jannah will be much better than that. More than that, we will have in Jannah, inshallah. Similarly, think of a glass castle suspended in the air with rivers of milk flowing as you look down. You can actually see the glass. You can look straight through it. You can see rivers of pure honey and pure fruit juices, the blends that you so wish and desire. If you can picture it in your mind, remember in Jannah is better than that. And imagine if you had to look at these rivers in your glass castle, which is suspended in the air, and as you desired for the honey, automatically you could taste it on your tongues. Can you imagine that? We can. We can imagine it. So it means in Jannah, Wallahi, is something better than that. That is just the introduction. The big question is, who was Jannah prepared for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already created Jannah. Who was it made for? I swear a qasam in this house of Allah, the creator of Jannah, the creator of myself and yourself and the entire universe and whatever exists that we are so fortunate to be from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jannah was created for us, inshallah. We must understand, we must realize that wallahi this shahada we have, The kalima we have is so powerful that there is nothing that can compete with it. Wallahi, I tell you that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described the worst person from amongst us. The worst person from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all know we would like to enter Jannah. And inshallah, we will all enter Jannah. The problem is, some of us, due to our weakness, we might have to make a trip via Jahannam to Jannah. May Allah protect us. We all know when we are going for Hajj, may Allah take us all for Hajj. Those who've been, may Allah accept it. Those who haven't, may Allah make it easy for you to go. We all know that when we embark for Hajj, if you have a direct flight, you smile because you know I'm going straight there. I'm leaving Cape Town and I have been chosen to be from amongst those who will fly directly to Madinatul Munawwara, subhanallah. Isn't it a privilege? Because you don't want to go via Addis Ababa or Nairobi. We all know what it feels like. We've heard. It's difficult. Your bags might get misplaced. You might have a problem. So we will ensure if we can afford it, we will take the direct flight going straight through to Medina to Munawwara, the Medina of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
When it comes to this dunya, we've understood the example of direct flights and indirect flights. And we've understood the inconvenience. Let us understand the same when it comes to Jannah. We have a direct flight to Jannah and we have an indirect journey via Jahannam. May Allah save us. But in order to instill hope in my dear mothers and sisters, I wish to put forward to you the worst, the worst person from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his example. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us, speaking of a man, and wallahi this is good news to our sisters, because at least a man was discussed as being the worst. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has discussed a man who will be akhiru man yakhruju min jahannam. The last person to come out of jahannam. The worst from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What has been made for him? That's what I want to tell you. Why do I want to tell you that today? Because it is either me that has that or I am better than that. I am either the worst from the ummah. From amongst us, we are either the worst in the ummah or we are better than the worst. Is there anything worse than the worst? No. That is why I want to raise this. It's either us or we are going to have better than that, inshallah, by the power of Allah. When this man will be roasting in the fire of Jahannam, the kuffar will tell him, your shahada did not help you in any way. You recited it. We did not. But today we are burning in the same fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hear that statement. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya Abdi, O oh my worshipper, Ukhruj min jahannama, come out of jahannam, subhanallah. Why? Because Allah would have heard the statement of the kuffar that you have uttered, La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. You have uttered that shahada and it has not helped you. A'udhu billah. That can never be the case. When that statement will be made by the kuffar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to the rescue of his worshipper and Allah will say, Come out of the fire of Jahannam. I am taking you out through my mercy. This will be the last person to come out. And it is reported in the hadith as the people will come out of Jahannam, there will be a pond there, the revival pond, where they will be dipped so that their skins can come out as fresh as possible. After being burnt in the fire of Jahannam, when a person comes out, their skin will be revitalized, revived. By being dipped into that pond, the person will be dipped in the pond and he will be made to sit just outside Jahannam. And he will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Ya Allah, I do not need anything else from you. You have granted me enough. You have taken me out of the punishment of Jahannam and you have saved me from the fire of hell. I thank you, Ya Allah, for having given me this gift. I do not want anything else. Subhanallah. And the person will be seated. Remember, and I'm reminding you, this is the worst person. The worst. He will be seated outside Jahannam. And some time later, he will see a tree at a distance. And he will notice that this tree has a shade. And he will make a dua to Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. I seek from you one thing. Thereafter, I don't want anything else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, My worshipper, did you not say that you did not want anything else from me? And he will say, Ya Allah, your mercy is great. Ya Allah, you are the greatest. I know you will give me. This is the last thing I want. I don't want anything else. And 
Subhanallah. When he is asked, what is it that you want? He will say, I just want to be moved from where I am and be placed in the shade of that tree. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, Ya Abdi, is there anything else that you wish and you want and you desire? He will say, Ya Allah, that is the last thing I want. I don't want anything else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him that place. He will be taken and he will be put under the tree. And he will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, there is nothing else I want. You have granted me my wish. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Praise be to Allah the greatest. And the time will pass. And as the time passes, this man will notice a breeze coming from a certain direction, a cool breeze. And he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, there is one more thing I want. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, But my worshipper, did you not tell me that that was the last thing you needed? He will say, Ya Allah, my weakness and your greatness. My weakness requires that there is a breeze coming from this direction. I wish to be placed slightly closer to this cool breeze that is coming. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, is there anything else you want after that? And he will say, no, that is the last thing I wish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him that last wish of his. He will be put very close to the breeze and he will be there for a period of time. And thereafter he will notice a smell, a beautiful scent coming from the direction of Jannah. Beautiful scent. Remember he came out of Jahannam, he is not yet in Jannah. He will notice the beautiful scent. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting his worshipper the appreciation of every gift. And he will say, Ya Allah, there is one thing I need and one thing I want. And Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal will say, my worshipper, did you not say you did not want anything else? What is it you want? He will say, Ya Allah, there is a beautiful smell coming from that direction. Ya Allah, take me closer to that scent, to that smell. Subhanallah. Look at how this worshipper is wishing for more and more. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. The greatness of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him his wish and draw him right at the source of the scent and the smell. Where is the source? Just outside the doors of Jannah, at a distance from the doors of Jannah. And he will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, there is nothing else I want. You are the greatest, Ya Allah. But after some time, he will say, Ya Allah, I see the door of Jannah. I see the door of Jannah. Ya Allah, I seek one more thing, one more thing from you. And Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal will repeat what he had said to him. And he will say, Oh my worshiper, have you not continued saying, This is the last thing, that is the last thing, this is the last thing? And the worshiper will say, This is indeed the last thing. I need you. To put me right at the door of Jannah, subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, anything else you want my dear worshipper? He will say, no, that is the last thing that I wish for you to put me just at the door of Jannah. Wallahi, this is either myself or yourselves or we will have a better status than this. Subhanallah. It is either myself or yourselves or we will have something more than this. Because we are either the worst or we are better than the worst. And he will spend some time after being granted his wish at the door of Jannah and he will call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yet again, subhanallah. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, I have asked you and I am asking you, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, there is one last thing I want, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, My worshipper, I have given you so much. 
What is it that you want now? After promising me that you won't want anything else. Ya Rabbi, grant me entry into Jannah. Just on the side of the door, as the door opens, I just want to be just on the side there. The last person in the corner there near the door. Ya Allah, grant me a place just inside. And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will communicate with this worshiper. And Allah will say, Ya Abdi, Atarda an yakuna laka mithla dunya. Oh my worshiper, would you wish if I were to give you the equivalent of the dunya, whatever the dunya ever had and ever held in terms of gold and silver and whatever material things the dunya ever had? Would it please you if I were to give you the equivalent of one entire dunya only to yourself? And he will say, Ya Allah, if you are to give me, I am not going to reject it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya Abdi, falaka mithluhu wa mithluhu wa mithluhu wa mithluhu ashara marrat. Oh my worshiper, for you I have prepared the equivalent of the dunya and double it and triple it. And quadruple it ten times the dunya is only prepared for you, one worshipper of mine. Enter Jannah today, subhanallah. And the doors of Jannah will be made to be opened for this worshipper. And as he is racing towards Jannah, as he is entering the door, he will notice a huge nur. So massive that he has never seen in his life. And he will think to himself, let me rush into prostration for indeed, this is my creator. Let me rush into prostration for indeed, this is my creator. And let me tell you, as he is about to go down, a voice will be heard from the nur. Saying, I am your servant, I am at your service, I am the gatekeeper of Jannah. Is there anything I can do for you? Subhanallah. That is the angel who will be the doorkeeper of Jannah, the particular door that this worshiper will be entering from. He will look stunned, amazed. I thought this was Allah, it is just a creature of Allah. Subhanallah. And he will be led towards his own Jannah. Remember the meaning of the term Jannah is garden. I have my garden inshallah. You have your garden inshallah. We all have our gardens inshallah. May Allah grant us those gardens. Amen. And as he is racing towards his door, he will notice the pathway leading to his door will be made of little pebbles and stones of gold and silver and what have you, the pearl and the other gems and jewels of the dunya in the highest form. When we compare the gold of the dunya to the gold of the akhirah, wallahi, we will not comprehend the difference. Huge difference beyond comprehension. We will have to see it inshallah. Then wallahi, we will meet in Jannah. We will meet in Jannah inshallah. And we will discuss it to say, you remember one day you came to Cape Town. These are the pebbles you spoke about. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Bi'ithnillahi azza wa jalla, we will be there. Develop the yaqeen in your heart. Develop it in your minds. Develop it in your souls. We are going to meet in Jannah, inshallah. And as he is racing towards this door of his, he will notice a bigger door than the first. You know, in the dunya, when you have a house, the main gate is bigger than the second one. But in the Akhirah in Jannah, Subhanallah, your door is bigger than the main door. Subhanallah. And as he goes, his door will begin to open because the door recognizes him. Subhanallah. Today we have senses recognizing a person to open the door which at times get jammed and we need to bring back the manufacturers to say, you know what? Our sensor is jammed. People are stuck inside and outside. But wallahi in the akhirah, the door itself will sense you. And as the door opens, 
he will notice a massive noor, ten times larger than the first noor. And he will say, Illam yakun huwallahu, fahada huwallah. The first noor I saw was not Allah. If that was not Allah, then definitely this noor, which is ten times larger than that first one, definitely has to be Allah. And he will want to go down into prostration, and a voice will be heard from this noor. I am the gatekeeper of your Jannah. I am at your service. Is there anything I could do for you? Subhana Rabbi Al A'la. He will be stunned, shocked, amazed, bewildered, looking in awe. And then he will take one step, one step into his own paradise, his own garden, his own Jannah. Remember, it's either me or I have better than this. Allahu Akbar. That is the point of hope we have tonight. And as he puts one step into his own garden, what he sees inside will capture him to the extent the hadith mentions for 500 years he will stand on that spot admiring what is inside subhanallah for 500 years he will not move from there he will have one step out one step in and he is just looking imagine how beautiful it must be subhanallah our lives in this dunya are 70 years a'maru ummati ma bayna sittina ila sab'in according to the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the lifespan of my ummah is between 60 and 70. If Allah has granted you above 70, Wallahi, you are living on borrowed time. Bonus, mashallah. May Allah grant us Jannah and may He grant us an easy death. May He make us happy the day we have died. A poet says, and I'm going to mention it in English. A poet says, O son of Adam, when you came to this world, you came crying and those around you were smiling in happiness. Is that not true? When you were born, you were crying. If you didn't cry, they slapped your bottoms in order to make you cry. Subhanallah. That is a fact. They are trained to do that in the hospitals. They say it's healthy to cry at that point. When you were born, you came to this world crying. And those around you were smiling in happiness. So live your life in such a way that when you leave this world, you will leave this world smiling in happiness. And those around you will be crying at the loss. Subhanallah. That is the statement. Today we live our lives in such a way that when one of us dies, the community says, oh, that guy should have gone two years ago. That guy was a pain in the community. Wallahi, we don't want to live those type of lives. So our lives are 60, 70 years. One day of the Akhirah, one day in Jannah is more than a thousand years of this dunya. One day is already more than a thousand what about two days, 10 days, 20 days, one year, two years, 500 years? We've lost count. We've lost count. But this man will be standing for 500 years just looking. Just looking. And what is it that will distract him after that? That will make him move? He will notice, subhanallah, a light. He will notice a light like the flash of lightning without thunder. And he will look up and it is reported he will see the hoor of Jannah, subhanallah. After 500 years of looking, he will see the hoor of Jannah. That was her smile, the tooth created, the tooth that shone created that particular flash similar to a flash of lightning without thunder. That was just the tooth, the smile. Imagine how beautiful the teeth must be. And it is reported in the same hadith that when he looks there, for another 500 years, he will only look at this hoor. So 1,000 years he has spent on the spot until a voice comes from the hoor, O worshipper of Allah, do we not have a right? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. O worshipper of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala do we not have a right are you going to stand there forever and watch are you not going to come 
and get what is yours. Allahu Akbar. And that is when he will move into Jannah. And Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once this last person to enter Jannah will enter Jannah, will call. He will make a call. Ya ahla jahannam halummu. O people of Jahannam, come. Come here. Wa ya ahla jannati halummu. O people of Jannah, come. The people of Jannah will be brought. The people of Jahannam will be brought. And he will call out to Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. O Jibreel, bring forth death. Eatini bil maut, bring forth to me death. Today we might not understand what that means. But let me explain to you. We taste death. That very death will be brought in the form of a small animal. In front of the people of Jannah and in front of the people of Jahannam as an animal. One of the small animals that we sacrifice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the people of Jannah, Ya Ahlal Jannati, I promised you certain things. Did you get them? And inshallah, we will all say, Labbayka wa sa'dayka wal khayru fi yadayka. Indeed, we have got what you have promised us. Subhanallah. And the people of Jahannam will be asked, You were promised certain things. Did you see? Did you get what you were promised? May Allah protect us and our offspring from shirk and kufr. And they will say, yes, we have got what you promised us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order death to be slaughtered in the presence of everyone. And death will be slaughtered and sacrificed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at the people of Jannah and say, Ya ahlal Jannah, na'imun na'imun la mawta ba'da al-yawm. وَيَا أَهْلَ جَهَنَّمْ عَذَابٌ عَذَابٌ لَا مَوْتَ بَعْدَ الْيَوْمِ O people of Jannah, for you is goodness upon goodness, bounty upon bounty, forever and ever. There is no death after this day. And O people of Jahannam, for you is punishment, punishment forever. There is no death after this day. Subhanallah. Remember, this will be after the last person who deserved a minor punishment in Jahannam has already come out of Jahannam. Those who are remaining are only those who deserve Jahannam forever and ever because of their lack of the shahada. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. That is the ticket I have. That is the ticket you have. That is what will take us out of Jahannam. That is what will drive us to Jannah, inshallah. Are we not fortunate, my dear brothers and sisters? Wallahi, don't you feel how fortunate we are? And thereafter, the people of Jannah will go into Jannah. The people of Jahannam will go into Jahannam. And now the question I have for you is the crucial question. A thousand years later, a million years later, Hundred million years later, one billion years later, one trillion years later, we meet. Subhanallah. I see you, I meet you, and I ask you a question. MashaAllah, my dear brother, my dear sister, we are in Jannah. How long have we been here for? What will the answer be? One trillion years and so many billion and so many million above that. And then the question comes. How much is remaining? What is remaining? Do you know what is the answer? We are only starting. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That is the meaning of Khalidina fiha abada. They will dwell therein forever and ever. A billion years later, it's only starting. A trillion years later, it is only starting. Forever and ever, it is only starting. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. That is the Jannah. Allah says, compete for Jannah. Ala inna sil'at Allahi ghaliyah. Definitely, the commodity of Allah is not cheap. It is expensive. What does this mean? 
Don't we want Jannah? We need to pay for it. It's not cheap. It doesn't come by for free. Yes, we've been chosen to pay for it. So pay. What form of payments? Let me tell you. And I've given this example yesterday as well. When we buy a house in the dunya, if we cannot afford it, maybe those who sell it might agree that you pay monthly installments. Nowadays it happens with cell phones and everything. Monthly installments with motor vehicles especially. So we make down payments and then we pay our monthly installments. Why? Because we know we have something that we want. We need the title deeds of this house. Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, the same example, but of a slightly, slightly different category and nature. We want the title deeds of that Jannah of ours, don't we? We want to own it. Allah says, make the down payment. That is your shahada, your kalima. La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is your down payment. And now you shall make installments five times a day. It is known as salah. Subhanallah. Once a year, known as zakah. Once a lifetime, known as hajj. These are payments towards jannah. Every time you stay away from haram, tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, that is my payment towards that commodity that I am trying to buy from you. Subhanallah. So whenever you have read salah, it will not go to waste. Every time you've come to the masjid, Ya Allah, I am feeling lazy. I am feeling lazy. I don't even want to get up for Salatul Fajr. The only reason I am getting up is because I need to make a payment for that commodity of ours that I want to buy from you, Ya Allah. So you've made a payment, another payment, a third payment. Don't miss a payment because then there will be a penalty. We know what happens in the dunya. You miss one payment, there is a penalty. Wallahi, we don't want to miss our payments. When you have to stay away from haram, it is an opportunity to make a big payment. Subhanallah. For example, you've agreed to pay over 24 months and suddenly you get a large sum of money. You would be intelligent if you just went forward and said, look, I knew I agreed to pay in 24 months, but I'll give you the cash now because I've got it. Subhanallah. You get the title deeds earlier, don't you? Or you might then pay more and buy a bigger house. Subhanallah. Your Jannah might be better. So the more haram you stay away from, the bigger your paradise, the greater you will get. Every salah you read, the more concentration you have in the salah. May Allah grant us concentration. The hadith says, a sign of qiyamah. Yushiku an tadkhula masjid jama'atin fala tara fihi rajulan khashi'a. There will come a time that you enter a masjid with jama'ah. Not a single person will be concentrating in his salah. Wallahi, that time has come a long time ago. Sahaba radiallahu anhum already said, Ra'ayna zaman. We have seen this time. What about us? We are far away. There was a man who corrected the Imam in Salatul Isha. He said, Dear Imam, you have read three rakats, not four. But the whole congregation was confused. They didn't know. Why? He says, No, I can guarantee you that it's three rakats, it's not four. But how? The Imam got up and asked the community, Jama'at al Muslimin, is this what happened? And everyone will say, look, we don't know. The whole community. This man, what does he say? He says, I guarantee because I've got four shops. In every rakat, I do the accounts of one shop. Today, I only did three and the salam was made. That means there's one still remaining. Subhanallah. We thought one concentrated. He was the biggest culprit. Subhanallah. That is the condition of us today. Everyone, as you say, Allahu Akbar, what am I going to do after salah? There's hot food waiting for us today. I don't want it to get cold. My children are here, are here and there. There is a lift I want to catch. I quickly need to wear. Where did I put my shoes? Right. That's how I'm going to walk out. This is what's happening today. But remember, when you lose concentration in salah, it is a bad sign. But at the same time, it is also a slightly positive sign if we look at it from another angle. What is that angle? Let me tell you. What is shaitan's job? Shaitan does not want you to get Jannah. Shaitan wants to spoil that down payment of yours and the subsequent payments. He wants to spoil it. That is his mission. He promised Allah that, Ya Allah, I will show you they will worship me, but not you. So Shaitan comes to a person and says, Don't go for salah. We know how it feels early morning. 
Cape Town, mashallah, you cannot predict the weather. I've seen it with my own self, with my own eyes. So what happens early morning? It's cold and mashallah. We want to, to get up for salah, but unfortunately, shaitan comes. What does he do to you? Massages you at the right time. Saying, no, 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 don't worry. Just hit that clock and snooze it. Five minutes. Snooze it. Five minutes. You are getting up. And what happens? You snooze it. Before you know it, the sun has already gone up. That's what shaitan wanted from you. So if he succeeded in that, you spoiled your payment for Jannah. For that commodity. Remember the commodity we are speaking about. Jannah. But tell me if you fought shaitan, you said, no, please move away. I'm getting up. Now you stood up. What does shaitan do now? Take some of the youngsters whom their parents get them up for salah. They don't want. Suddenly they come groggy to the masjid. Did you make wudu? They say, yes. But do they have wudu? No, they don't. It happens to some of the children. May Allah protect us. Save us. Sometimes the adults are guilty of that. A'udhu billah. A big crime. But that is falling in the trap of shaitan. Now, when you don't have wudu and you know you don't have it, shaitan's already won. He's already got you. You know, people ask me, why is it that when we are in love, illicit, haram love, we get on with each other? The minute we marry each other and we say, nakahtuha wa qabiltuha, we start fighting. I've been asked this so by so many people. I can give you the reason. When you are not married, shaitan's job is to make you commit zina, so he beautifies one another for you. When you are married, shaitan's job is to divide you. So as soon as you say, nakahtuha wa qabiltuha, he wants you to fight with one another. That is it. So now when it comes to salah, what do we notice? A man who knows he doesn't have wudu, shaitan now leaves him because shaitan's won. Shaitan's gone to someone else. That is why the Christians, when they pray, they pray with so much dedication and concentration because already they are on the wrong path. Shaitan doesn't go to them as much as he comes to us. The Muslims are the ones whom shaitan will come to more and more and create this doubt and that doubt, this problem and that problem. So now the man who doesn't have wudu, he will concentrate 110% in salah. He will be able to focus totally. The minute he makes wudu, now shaitan comes, what happens? Oh, you broke your wudu as you were walking from there to here. Now you've got to go back. Oh no. That's shaitan's plan. Yes, shaitan plans in your stomach also, how he moves the gas from side to side. Subhanallah. And then what happens? Let's say we fight him again. We make the second wudu and we come into the masjid. Now we are here. Shaitan is pulling us out, pulling us out. He's not succeeding. We are dedicated. We walked. Allahu Akbar. What is the last thing he can do? Tell me. The last thing to spoil your salah. He now takes away your concentration. That's it. So shouldn't you thank Allah that you are not from amongst those who left their salah totally. You are not from amongst those who don't have wudu. You are not from amongst those who shaitan succeeded in keeping away from salah. But now you've come. So you've got to the last point, inshallah. Now you try and concentrate as much as you can. And Allah will grant you the success, inshallah. Allah will grant you, inshallah, the ability to concentrate. The point I was making was that these are payments towards Jannah. These are payments towards Jannah. We need to pay for Jannah. Wallahi, I tell you, in Jannah is something beyond we can understand. Who wants to meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? We all do, don't we? Yes. Wallahi, we will meet him. If you are doubting it, there is something wrong with your iman. We will meet Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, Umar al Farooq, Musa alayhi salam. If we want, we will sit with him, talk about whatever we want, Fir'aun and the problems he had in the dunya, subhanallah. Wallahi, you will sit with him. Wallahi, I'm telling you. Have you ever thought of all these things? As I mentioned today in Jumu'ah, we might not have been chosen to be Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the dunya, but Wallahi, in the akhirah, we will be his companions. Dhukuran wa inatha, male and female, subhanallah. But we need to make payments for it. When you stay away from haram, you can communicate with Allah. Are you not striking the deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You say, Ya Allah, I have seen something. I really wanted to go for it. The only reason why I am staying away from it is because of you 
and our deal that we are striking. I am making a payment towards that deal. Wallahi, that abstention from haram will come in the form of intercession on the day of Qiyamah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, forgive this man. Subhanallah. Ya Allah, grant him jann Jannah. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us Jannah. May Allah grant us the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I tell you on the day of Qiyamah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in a hadith, Inni jalisun lakum ala al -hawd. I will be seated for you, waiting for you, my ummah, all of you. My, I am included, you are included. I will be seated, waiting for you on the pond, Hawdul Kawthar, which is known. I have a pond, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, on the day of Qiyamah, and I will wait for you. You will need the sip of water from my pond. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we are passing, he will recognize us. How? The hadith says, غُرًّا مُحَجَّلِينَ مِنْ آثَارِ الْوُضُوء The wudu that we make is so spiritually uplifting that it leaves nur on our faces and parts of the body. We don't see it, but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to see it on the day of Qiyamah. Min ummati, min ummati, min ummati. That's my ummah, that's my ummah. That one is from my ummah. Come, come, drink from my pond. Subhanallah. And he says, there will be people whom I will say, Ya Allah, this person is from me and from my ummah. Minni wa min ummati. Fayuqalu la. It will be said, no. Ama sha'arta ma fa'alu ba'dak. Wallahi ma barahu yarji'una ala a'qabihim. No, you don't know what they have done after you. They turned away. They turned away from your teachings. They were not interested. We don't want to be from amongst those. The hadith says, La tukhzuni, do not disgrace me on the day of Qiyamah. Why? I will call you out and somebody, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command will become between us. We don't want that to happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boost our iman. May he uplift us. Wallahi, let's become better people. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, we already have a great gift. Consolidate it. Turn to Allah. No sin that you have committed is too big for Allah to forgive. Admit your error. Turn to Allah today, here and now. If you die after five minutes, at least you will die as pure as the day you were born. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who earn the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And wallahi, I tell you, we are going to meet inshallah in Jannah. We will meet, we have seen the faces, mashallah. And thumma wallah, I don't have a doubt in my mind and in my heart. Consolidate, hold this iman of ours, inshallah. Make dua for me, I make dua for you. Make dua for one another. Don't let this dunya bring you apart. It is a dunya for a few days, wallah. When you leave, you need to leave with Jannah already waiting for you. We need to reserve and book our places. It is like when you come to Cape Town in peak season, they tell you, make sure you have booked in advance. Wallahi, we need to book our places now for Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us togetherness in the dunya and in the akhirah. May Allah bring us together with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, the words I have said, all I intended is to instill hope in the hearts and minds of my brothers and sisters and myself. May Allah have granted us that hope. Jazakumullah khair. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.